Thank you. That concludes topical questions. The next item of business is a statement by Mary McAllen on Ferguson Marine. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Mary McAllen, up to 10 minutes, Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, thank you. Um, today's statement provides me with an early opportunity as Cabinet Secretary for Wellbeing, Economy, Net Zero and Energy to restate and to reaffirm the Scottish Government's commitment to ensure that Ferguson Marine delivers two uh, lifeline ferries, the Glen Sanox and the Glen Rosa, so that we bring next generation technology to the CalMac fleet and provide reliable, high quality services to our island communities. It provides an opportunity following meetings that I've held with the Chair and Chief Executive and with the unions that present uh, the skilled and dedicated workforce at Ferguson Marine to report the latest information on costs and delivery dates provided by the business and to provide an update on the work that's taking place to ensure a long-term future for the yard. On Monday, 26 February, the Chief Executive Officer, David Tideman, provided his regular progress update to the conveners of the Net Zero Energy and Transport and Public Audit Committees. This process reflects that the relationship between the Chief Executive and Parliament is a statutory one. It's one in which the Chief Executive is responsible for the delivery of the programme to plan and budget, and is personally responsible for spending as part of the statutory accountable officer role set out in the Public Finance and Accountability Scotland Act 2000. The next day, Tuesday 27 February, the Chief Executive, along with the Chair Andrew Miller and non-executive director Simon Cunningham, appeared at the Net Zero Energy and Transport Committee, where they were questioned for 90 minutes on the updates the Chief Executive had provided. This was helpful and instructive because the Chair and the Board of Directors are appointed by Ministers to provide strategic direction and hold the executive team, including the Chief Executive, to account for their performance. The Yard has been grappling, presiding officer, with complex and varied legacy issues, some of which go back many years, and the Board is well placed to understand these pressures and consider actions that they believe to be in the best interests of the Yard. I am grateful to uh, members of the Committee for the degree of scrutiny that they were able to provide on a range of issues, including the latest cost projections, the approvals received from the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, and the Board's work to develop a business case for future investment in the shipyard. In his letter, the Chief Executive stated that the cost to complete Glen Sanox will not exceed £149.1 million since the point of public ownership. He also reported that the costs to complete Vessel 802, or Glen Rosa as it will be known, will not exceed £150 million since public ownership. And he signalled that he remains hopeful that it can be completed below that maximum figure because the Yard is learning from the way in which it has resolved the many legacy issues that were inherited around the first vessel. At committee, the Chair reported that the Board had scrutinised those cost forecasts and Simon Cunningham described how they had now had much greater visibility of the critical path to handover and the risks to the programme. They said that the Board had much greater confidence in the accuracy of the forecasts, in part because Glen Sanix was nearing handover, but also in respect of 802 because of the diligence that they had carried out and because the management had negotiated fixed price contracts from subcontractors to replace the more costly and time and materials contracts they had inherited on the build of Glen Sanix. Now, whilst I am encouraged by the greater degree of confidence shown by the board, and whilst I do recognise and agree with the point of my predecessor, Neil Gray, in his update to Parliament, namely that inflationary and other significant pressures, such as around cost, uh, supply chains and de design gaps, do impact on the cost of completion, whilst all of that is the case, the level of these increases remains deeply disappointing. And I share the frustration that will be felt right, uh, by everyone across the Parliament and indeed in our country. I met with the Chair and Chief Executive last week and impressed upon them the need to understand that frustration and to take whatever action appropriate to avoid further increases in costs. I will assure that my officials continue to meet every week with senior management at Ferguson's and their delivery partners, including CMAL and CalMAC, 
to ensure that they are living up to that requirement. Separately, we have commenced due diligence on the latest projections using external advisors to ensure that they are accurate and justifiable. And I will update both the Net Zero Energy and Transport and Public Audit Committees once this work is complete. This will be a short exercise, but one which is necessary to ensure that we continue to spend in the best interests of our island communities and taking into account the wider economic benefits that delivery of these vessels will ultimately provide to the Clyde and Hebrides ferry services route. Now, in terms of build progress, the Chief Executive indicated in his update that Glen Sanex has proved to be very reliable during its sea trials. When running at full power, she has been smooth and quiet and performing very well. The Chief Executive reported that the recent delay in installing the LNG system was due to a delay in securing a, a contractor in what is a globally expanding market. He also outlined that whilst handover with a single fuel was possible, the end user CalMac had been very clear that they expected a dual fuel vessel on commissioning, and this was therefore what the shipyard had been instructed to deliver. He further set out to the committee that he considered that the redesign of stairwells to certain areas of the ship to meet with maritime and coast guard agency requirements, which I should add they are absolutely right to require, had increased the cost by over a million pounds. Taking these and other factors into account, the Chief Executive reported that Glen Sanex would be handed over to CMAL at the end of May this year and that the handover date for 802 would move to September 2025. The next milestones in Glen Sanex's delivery will be when she moves under her own power again to the dry dock at Intergreen in early April. There, a number of hull cleaning and maintenance tasks will be carried out, concluding in her return to sea for a second set of sea trials later in the month. Weather and tide permitting, plans are underway to launch 802 on 9th April. The delay from the original planned date of 12th March is in part due to the need to have more work carried out on the Glen Sanex at the Port Glasgow site. The launch of 802, however, is an important milestone for the delivery of the vessel, and we look forward to engaging with the Yard on the details around this. The vessel will be named formally at a later date, and this is consistent with the plans uh, for vessels being built in Turkey, the first of which is due to be launched in a similar manner this month. This will mean we are on track to deliver six new vessels by 2026 for our island communities to continue to support their economic resilience. Presenting officer, I will continue to impress upon Ferguson Marine the impact that delays are having on island communities and the need to do everything possible to bring the two high quality ferries into service. Our due diligence into the latest cost projections will also test the delivery dates provided by the yards, but it is clear to me that completing these vessels at Ferguson Marine will present the fastest possible route to getting the vital new lifeline services as well as providing wider economic benefits to the Inverclyde area. I'd like to now move to the future of the Yard. From the very start, we have sought to ensure that the Yard has a sustainable future, whether that be in the public sector or, as we have always said, by returning the Yard to the private sector if and when the time is right to do so. Members will recall that last November, the former Cabinet Secretary confirmed that we were unable to support an initial business plan and associated request for capital investment submitted by Ferguson Marine, and that we'd asked the board to revisit the proposal and to develop a revised plan. I hope that this is successful and that the board will be able to provide a robust case for investment that's deliverable, makes economic sense, and of course, meets our legal requirements on subsidy control. The Scottish Government has provided funding to enable the Yard to draw upon external advisors to support this process, and I understand that extra resource is also being provided at Ferguson Marine Board level to steer this work. I welcome this commitment from the Board, and I look forward to considering the new business plan, which we expect to receive by the end of this month. I recognise, of course, that as the existing contracts near completion, these are unsettling times for the workforce. And I've been so impressed by the passion and the commitment shown by the trade unions in making the case for future investment. I was pleased, uh, presiding officer, to have the chance to hear directly from union representatives during a meeting in Parliament last week. Their views are vitally important to me 
and I took the opportunity to listen and to give them an assurance that ministers will leave no stone unturned when it comes to securing a future for the yard and for shipbuilding on the Clyde. Presiding officer, in conclusion, as a former transport secretary, I am acutely aware of how important the delivery of the Glen Sanex and Glen Rosa are to our CHIFS network and the island communities it supports. I'm encouraged by the results of the initial sea trials of Glen Sanex and committed to supporting Ferguson Marine, its board and the people who work for it to make sure that both ferries are delivered as soon as possible. I'm also determined to do all I can to support the shipyard to secure a route to a sustainable future. I've already met with trade unions. I understand both their frustrations about the mistakes of the past and their determination to find a brighter future for their current members and for future generations of workers in Inverclyde. I don't underestimate the challenges involved, but the yard is incredibly significant to the local, regional and national economy of Scotland. And so they were therefore committed to doing all we can to ensure, uh, to ensure that it remains so. Thank you. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we'll move on to the next item of business. I'd be grateful if members who wish to put a question were to press their request to speak buttons. And I call Graham Simpson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of the statement? Um, it came a bit later than we normally get, um, so I'll just ask her to look into that. However, it was a disappointing statement. It said very little new. In fact, it said nothing new. So any islanders who are watching this will not for the first time have been disappointed because they might have been expecting some news, some announcement that would give them some hope, some, something that they didn't already know. But that wasn't in, in this statement. I'm pleased that the sea trials of the Glen Sanox have, have gone well. Um, that is encouraging. I think we're getting close to the end of what has been uh, a scandal, um, and that's good. So the islanders will get their new ferries. That's to be, that, you know, that's to be applauded eventually. Now, the Cabinet Secretary says the government will be carrying out due diligence on the costs and the timescale, which kind of suggests that she doesn't entirely trust what she's been told. So who's going to carry out that due diligence? How much is it going to cost? And when we look to the future of the yard, she rightly says the government turned down um, a previous bid for an extra 25 million, which would, would have given the, the yard a, a new uh, plating line. Um, is she committing to any extra investment? You know, what is the yard going to look like? How can it secure the route to the sustainable future that she says she wants. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Senior Officer, I thank Graham Simpson um, for his question and I note his point about uh, the timing of the statement uh, arriving with him. In terms of the content of the statement, I would uh, respectfully note that uh, opposition parties across the chamber asked for the statement and that's why I'm here giving this update today and I should say in very early course in taking over the new uh, portfolio but I'm happy to do so because it's important to the government. Um, and in terms of the updates that I gave, it's about an acknowledgement of uh, the Chief Executive's updates on costs and timing. It's about registering my disappointment in the um, scale of, of, of the change of position. And it's about assuring uh, Parliament that due diligence will now take place. In respect of um, that due diligence, I don't think that Graham Simpson would wish to cast any doubt on the government's, um, the importance of the government doing this. That's what prudent public spending and consideration of what's put in front of you is about. It's underway just now. We are doing it supported by independent advisors. He's asked for a timescale. I don't have a timescale whilst the work is ongoing, although it will be shorter than the former period of due diligence uh, that was undertaken, owing to some of the improvements um, with uh, internal board scrutiny um, that has been undertaken uh, since then. And in terms of the future uh, and what I'm committed to, I'm committed to support the board and Ferguson Marine in producing an updated business plan and to considering it on receipt. Thank you. Alec Crowley. Thank you, President Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the early sight of the statement. There is no doubt there is a lot of blame to go around when it comes to the delivery of these new ferries. But what is absolutely clear is that the workforce at Ferguson's are blameless. 
This statement today fails to give assurances that the, for the yard and its workforce and the insurances they need. We need to know that there must be capital investment into the yard. Indeed, when I visited the yard almost a year ago, the workforce and the management were very clear that such investment was needed to secure the future. Does the Cabinet Secretary therefore accept that there is an urgent need to make a decision on this matter as soon as possible? What is the strategy the Government is working to and what are the timescales for decisions to be made? Will the decision on investment be made before the decisions are made on the small vessels programme? And finally, will the Government work with all parties in this chamber to ensure that we secure a future for shipbuilding in Port Glasgow? Cabinet Secretary. I um, thank Alex Rowley uh, for his question and I would agree in entirely with the sentiment about the importance of the workers at Ferguson Marine, uh, their centrality to uh, the government's focus on getting the vessels finished and on our focus on the future of the yard. Um, I think it's worth stating that the, the workforce at Ferguson Marine have been at the heart of the government's actions to date in respect of the yard and will continue to be at the heart of what we take forward um, in the future. And I, and I would say this was partly the reason why I was so keen to meet with GMB members' uh, representatives last week and to hear directly from them their views. They've been very instructive for me. It's why I've uh, committed to them that I'd like to come and visit the yard as soon as I can. And it's why I share uh, Alec Rowley's view on the urgency of uh, understanding future plans as 801 and 802 contracts uh, come to a close. That's why the government is supporting the development of the updated business case that I will give uh, very close consideration to when it's with me, and I'm expecting it at the end of March. Thank you. Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome delivery of the Glen Sanex in late spring. However, it's deeply disappointing that the £41 million small vessel programme is being reprofiled, i.e. delayed. Ferguson's has previously delivered high-quality hybrid small vessels on time and on budget, including the MV Katrina, which sails out of La Cranza, and the yard is crying out for orders. Does the Cabinet Secretary therefore agree that it makes sense to prioritise the ordering of these small ferries in order to show the market that Ferguson Marine has successfully turned the corner whilst delivering much-needed new vessels for our island communities? Cabinet Secretary. Um, President Officer, just thank Kenny Gibson for the question, and I, I understand very... Uh, very closely his interest in this matter. I'd say from the outset the small vessel replacement programme um, is, has not been delayed. It's a matter which um, my colleague the Transport Secretary um, is actively overseeing. For my part uh, in the Economy Directorate, direct award uh, is only possible in very strictly limited uh, circumstances under procurement rules. Uh, breaching these rules is, is not an option in and of itself, but equally it could lead to legal challenges, to cost and uh, to further delay. So we will consider uh, future contracts for vessels from public agencies uh, on a case-by-case -case basis and whether any might be open to uh, direct award in those strictly limited circumstances. But it is worth restating that the very best way for Ferguson Marine to be supported for into future uh, contracts, public or private, is to increase their uh, competitiveness. And that's exactly what the work that's ongoing with that business case that I've been uh, uh, mentioning. Thank you. Call Jamie Green to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm extremely concerned about the vagueness over the LNG system and whether that might cause further delays to the launch of the Glen Sanox. Because islanders on arm would rather have a vessel which runs solely on diesel than have no vessel running at all. Is the government digging in on the original wording of the contract, or is there any flexibility on launching this ship sooner rather than later? And why is the Scottish government, which actually owns this yard, not today committing to the small vessel build project in Inverclyde? Or is it most likely that Turkey, once again, will be the main benefactor of Scottish ferry building contracts? Cabinet Secretary. Um, setting off, so just to take the final point first in respect to the small vessel replacement programme, I already have stated in response to, to Kenny Gibson's uh, question that direct award is only uh, legal in strictly limited circumstances under public procurement rules. Um, on the matter of LNG, it is an operational matter which is uh, of the concern of the Chief Executive. However, it was discussed 
in some depth at committee last week. Um, the completion of the LNG commissioning programme for the dual fuel engines is estimated to be uh, by the end of May. The Chief Executive explained when he was in front of the um, committee that the main cause of delay was the lack of that available uh, specialist uh, contractors. Um, there has been a global expansion, uh, I understand, in the use of LNG and therefore there has been competition for specialist uh, contractors to carry out this work. But uh, David Tideman was able to confirm to committee that this has now been resolved with the appointment of a UK-based uh, contractor and should not impact further on the build of the Glen Sanox. Thank you. Stuart McMillan to be followed by Neil Bibby. Thank you, Presiding officer. Presiding officer. I'm pleased that the Cabinet Secretary has already met with the shop stewards, Alex Logan and John McMoneagle. Uh, and I cannot stress enough that these shop stewards are absolutely pivotal to the future of Ferguson Marine. Uh, and I'm going to come back to the point regarding the direct award uh, because the, the, the progress uh, of the direct award, uh, if that were to happen, uh, certainly has been, it's been slow. Uh, and the future of the yard, as things currently stand, does rely upon a direct award to Ferguson Marine of the Small Vessel Replacement Programme. That might not be welcomed by, uh, by some, but for the future of the yard, for the future of shipbuilding, and for the future of Ferguson Marine in Port Glasgow, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to please make the direct award to Ferguson Marine? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding Officer, I um, note uh, Stuart McMillan's very direct plea on behalf of his constituents, and I, I admire the advocacy that he has done on, on their behalf. Um, in the generality, Ferguson Marine is absolutely right to be turning its mind to winning its next contracts. Uh, decisions on what contracts to pursue are ultimately uh, operational matters for Ferguson Marine. Um, however, for our part, and I'm very happy to, to say that we will do all we can as shareholder to ensure that the business has a sustainable order book and a future. And in respect of small vessel replacement programme, we are currently considering the outline business case for the programme. Uh, an, updated, uh, an update on the procurement strategy will be provided in due course once a, a decision on in investment uh, has been made. I understand the potential opportunity that the small vessel replacement programme offers to Ferguson Marine, but I have to restate once again that direct award is only legal in strictly limited circumstances. I call Neil Bibby to be followed by Ivan McKee. I understand the Cabinet Secretary has said she needs to look at the detail of a new business case for investment in the yard uh, that can support jobs in the Emberclyde area that has lost a thousand jobs in the last 12 months. Uh, but to follow on from Graeme Simpson's point, does the Cabinet Secretary though accept the glaringly obvious point put forward by the GMB and that has cross-party support that government investment in the yard is now essential to winning future work, improving efficiencies and securing a positive future at the yard? And if that's not the government's plan, is there an alternative plan and what is it? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding officer, I, I, this government couldn't be accused of not having invested in Ferguson no, uh, Marine. Um, I think the, the point that Neil Bibby is making, though, is about the uh, link between that investment and their investment case and their ability to win future contracts. And I do uh, understand that they, the Ferguson Marine provided the Scottish Government with a request for capital investment of around £25 million pounds in June. Uh, presenting that as part of making the shipyard more uh, competitive. Our due diligence concluded that that initial business case would not meet uh, that vital commercial market operator test, which is a key legal requirement if we're to demonstrate compliance uh, with subsidy control. Um, that's why we are actively supporting the board now to recast that business case and investment plan and why we will give very close consideration to it when we receive it at the end of the month. Ivan McKee to be followed by Willie Rennie. Uh, turning to look at the future of the yard, um, the Cabinet Secretary will recognise a hugely competitive um, environment, commercial environment that operates in globally. Um, so to move that forward, can I ask what work the Scottish Government has done to seek out uh, potential industrial partners to bring investment, technology and expertise to help secure the long-term future of the yard? Cabinet Secretary. Um, thanks uh, to Ivan McKee for the question. I'm very happy to do so because, of, of course, um, what he describes as part of uh, considerations for the future of Ferguson Marine. The board um, has recently been strengthened with additional commercial uh, and shipbuilding expertise and the yard is supported by uh, a supply chain that brings new technology and expertise into the yard. Um, as I have said a number of times, the case for 
further government investment will be covered in the business plan that the board are currently uh, preparing that I hope to receive at the end of this month. And in the, the meantime, um, it is worth stating again that decisions on what contracts to pursue are for Ferguson Marine, but the Scottish Government stands behind them in supporting them to have the most prosperous future possible. Call Willie Rennie to be followed by Jackie Dunbar. Yeah, listening to the Cabinet Secretary, you'd think this tobacco had nothing to do with the SNP Government, but it's six years over budget. We should remember this. Three times three times over budget and six years late. Hundreds of millions of pounds of taxpayers' money. Workforce has been utterly humiliated. Islanders have been left stranded because of ministerial meddling from the very beginning. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell me why still no minister has lost their job as a result of this debacle? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding Officer, I am far more interested in the practical matters around the delivery of vessels 801 and 802 and the future of the yard than I am for politicking or whatever that was uh, that Willie Rennie was pursuing. What I would say, though, is for him to describe the saving of 300 plus jobs in the last commercial shipyard. Uh, on the Clyde as humiliating for the workers involved, yeah, exactly. I think is completely inaccurate. Our uh, objective has always been the delivery of the lifeline vessels, uh, supporting the highly skilled and dedicated workforce and securing a sustainable future for the yard. That's what I'm focused on, not politics. Yeah. Yeah. I call Jackie Dunbar to be... F uh, members, I regard that as neither courteous or respectful when I am trying to speak in the chamber, so thank you. I call Jackie Dunbar to be followed by Ariane Burgess. Thank you, President Officer. It's right that we scrutinise the progress of work at the Yard, and I was delighted to visit it a few weeks ago to see firsthand the progress being made. But what we should unite us all is a determination to secure a future for Scotland's commercial shipbuilding industry. So can the Cabinet Secretary provide any further information about the steps being taken to ensure that the Yard is competitive and in shape to compete for future contracts? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding Officer, thanks to Jackie Dunbar for her question. And I know that uh, she found her visit to Ferguson Marine Yard uh, very helpful and instructive and some of the workers that she was able to meet there, I know they left an impression on her. Um, I share her determination to secure the future of the yard and the importance of commercial shipbuilding on the Clyde. That work I've been describing and that we're supporting Ferguson Marine with in producing that updated business case and investment plan, I see as some of the key ways that we ensure a competitive future and uh, help the Yard to be in a position to competitively bid for uh, future contracts. Uh, and I give my assurance that I will give very close consideration with my team of the content of that business case when I receive it. Ariane Burgess to be followed by Jamie Halker johnston I am grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for her statement. As a Highlands and Islands MSP who represents many of Scotland's island communities, the performance and the future of our ferries and ports is a source of deep frustration to those communities. Equally, I recognise that the Cabinet Secretary, what the Cabinet Secretary has said about the anxieties felt by the workforce and trade unions at Ferguson's. I would be interested to understand what further reassurance can the Cabinet Secretary offer to the workforce that their views are heard and that their futures are also a priority. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, I mentioned in my statement that I was able to meet two uh, Fergus Marine GMB union shop stewards, John McMonagall and Alex Logan. Um, and I know that my predecessor, Neil Gray, also met with uh, them several times to hear their views firsthand. I've also undertaken to visit them at, at the yard as soon as I'm able and gave them an assurance when we met very early on in, in my tenure in this position uh, last week that their views and the views of those who they represent will be very important to me and to the government as we uh, move into what is a critical uh, period for the future of the yard. Um, as I said in an answer to a previous question, the, the workforce uh, has been central to all actions that this government has taken in respect to Ferguson Marine and will very much continue to be so. Jamie Halker johnston to be followed by John Mason. As colleagues have said, this statement says nothing. It reveals nothing that isn't already publicly known, and it certainly doesn't give any clarity to islanders, those who should be at the heart or central to the Scottish Government's considerations on this matter, but seem to have been forgotten by most of the SNP contributions today. On when Scotland's ageing ferries fleet, whether operated by CalMac or Northlink or by the councils, 
is going to be replaced, at what cost and what role Ferguson's will play in that. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell me when my island constituents will get the new boats they so desperately need? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding Officer, again, I just have to point out to, to Jamie Halko Johnson that this statement was called for, and I'm happy to come to the Chamber and update members on the content of, uh, of progress on this issue as often as, as they call for it. Um, the, I think also the, the, the fact that there has been so much activity by the Net Zero Committee, uh, who I credit with the um, scrutiny that they've been undertaking, indicates that there's a great deal of work ongoing across the Parliament uh, on this matter just now. Uh, I would point Jamie Halko Johnson to uh, my update in my statement that we are on track to deliver six new major vessels to serve Scotland's ferry network by 2020. I have to also point out to him how challenged we are in that regard by the actions of his government yep. uh, cutting our capital budget by up to 10% over the coming years and he should be prepared to explain to his constituents why that has been the case and why he hasn't been prepared to stand up to the Tories uh, on that. But for our part, we will continue uh, focused on delivery of those six vessels uh, and that will be, um, that will be uh, supported by the work that my colleague Fiona Hislop is taking forward in the island's connectivity plan. I call John Mason. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary quoted the Chief Executive of Ferguson saying that the sea trials of Glen Sanax had been very successful. Can she go into any more detail about these sea trials? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding Officer, this was a matter that the Chief Executive gave a very full account of uh, when he was in front of the Net Zero Committee last week. He described how the vessel was uh, uh, tried at different speeds, how it was a very smooth journey um, and how various vibrations which he could speak to and I'm not as technically uh, able to do so meant that it was a very successful one indeed. I also described in my statement what the next stages are for the trials of the Glen Sanex before she enters into service in, uh, in the coming year. I call Paul Sweeney for a brief supplementary. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Turkish National Investment Bank, Turk Exim Bank, Shipbuilding Financing Guarantee Programme can provide direct loans and or letters of guarantee to Turkish shipbuilding firms so they may obtain competitive pre-financing of up to 85% of the contract price. Will the Cabinet Secretary introduce a similarly competitive shipbuilding financing guarantee programme in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Presiding Officer, that was an utterly breathless uh, contribution from Paul Sweeney. I didn't catch most of the detail of it. If he wants to write to me with that, I will be very glad to look into the matter and to come back to him. Thank you. And a brief supplementary from Douglas Flumston. From recent uh, written questions by myself, we know that each of the two new vessels will require two tankers of LNG fuel each week, and each tanker will have a 962-mile return round trip from Kent to to Troon. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, if an audit has been carried out to assess if operating these vessels on dual fuel is, is better or worse for the environment? Cabinet Secretary. Um, presiding Officer, dual fuel uh, and its use in, in ferries is uh, very widely regarded as being positive for the environment, not least as part of uh, reduction of emissions of various um, various pollutants that are associated uh, with the single dual vessels. Um, so I think you only need look to the expansion of that market throughout the world and the research in respect of the environmental um, outputs of dual fuel to see for himself uh, that it is the better of the two to pursue. Thank you. That concludes the ministerial statement. I'll allow a moment or two for front benches to organise themselves.